So when it comes time for this to become permanent after you've painted, etc., and we need to adjust these, you can simply get your trolley on a nice flat surface, guys, then grab a square, right, and just use your square against your trolley to uh, get your plates square. Now you'll need to do this, it'll be fiddly, guys, because it's going to be need to be in conjunction with um with getting its uh, spacing correct, obviously, with your with the other side. So you'll get it in the ballpark on your rails first, so then it's going onto your rails. It's distanced uh, with your rails. Then take it off your rails, and then you can come and fine-tune it. But you need to do it on a nice flat surface, so then you can get these plates look as level as you can uh, to each other, so then you know that your bearings are actually square. And this is the way to fine tune it, guys. Then you can put it on your rails. It's, it's going to be a combination of doing this and then getting it on your rails and fine tuning it on your rails. So ultimately, when you get it pretty close on your rails, then I fine tune it so then there is no excessive side play. You can hear a little bit there. That's good. It can run free. Okay. And what I do is I then do my measurements from outside plate to outside plate. And uh, in this case, I'm 200 millimeters exactly from the outside to outside of the plate. And then I just check all around. And then that's a matter of getting that uh, to marry up by adjusting your jam nuts versus your outside nuts. All right, and then you'll get it to the point where your plate is even all around on both sides. Just slide it off, turn it the other way around, guys, put it back on, and then you can start checking off the other side. And you're wanting to get them all in the same place, and then you'll know they're square by using measurements like this. So combination of the square and then checking uh, your finishing distances, checking how your trolley's running, checking side play, see how now that that's completely tweaked, I've lost that side play, I've lost any slop, uh, and it's still running freely, okay, it's not, it's not too tight, there's not too much preload on the bearing, so it's fiddly, it takes time, uh, once you've got it, just make sure you go around and make sure you tighten all of those jam nuts, so then it doesn't move from that position. And then it's happy days. Got to have those jam nuts tight, guys. Ah, oh, that's just a beautiful thing. Double check once you've done your jam nuts up. So for me, if you're followed exactly uh, my build, all right, you should end up with your plates sitting outside to outside exactly 200 millimetres apart. So there you go, guys. You could set this up in that ballpark to start with on the bench. Get these close to, to 200 millimetres apart, top and bottom of your plates. Then you should be really, really close to getting this how it needs to sit on your rails. Now, things can vary, so uh, it may not be that yours is 200. It should, guys, if you followed my build, set everything up the way it's set up, got your measurements right, exactly how I've uh, done my measurements, you shouldn't have issues with things not contacting one another. So uh, anyway, guys, that's just a quick final adjustment to your bearings, and then you'll make adjustments as you go. Uh, over time with this uh, as far as routine maintenance goes checking your, your end play checking to make sure you haven't got excessive slop checking uh, to see if your bearings are excessively wearing into your rail and uh, yeah that's what you need to keep an eye on you are going to require patience to get these running square and free without excessive play all right but running smoothly 
and not too tight, okay, with not too much preload. So just take your time, guys. Be patient. You will come up with some new uh, colourful words for the English language, and you'll contribute to society in that way, getting these set up, but that's all good. That's not going to hurt anybody. Once you've got these into these positions, because they do take quite a long time, guys, to sort out. I'm still, uh, I've still got to tighten up my jam nuts on this one. Don't change them, okay? Because you can paint them as they are, all right? You will remove your bearings when we come to paint. Obviously, we don't want to paint our bearings. And our rail's not going to be painted. We'll take this off uh, before we paint. Uh, but once you've got them, because it takes a long time to sort them out, just leave them as they are, slide them off. Um, you'll get them back on before you finish everything this end. There's brackets and stuff that we have to weld on the other end here, guys, to take our surge motor, etc. Yeah, so it does take a while to get these sorted out. So what I recommend is once you've got them sorted out, lock them off, that's it, all right? They're done. Otherwise, you'll have to go through this whole process again. We will get our plate on next to take our uni joint and our front motor mount plate. We'll go through doing that next. Once that plate is on, we can paint these, all right? We can remove these. We can remove our bearings. That's the process. So let's get on to our plating to join our top frame to our mid frame via our trolley rails. Let's get our plate carriers made for our front motor mount and our uni joint. You'll need to take your 100 by 5 mil flat that you've got still remaining, and you'll need to measure 150 millimeters Mark that, put your square on, and draw that in guys, you'll do this three times, 150 millimetre pieces, and you want three of these. So I've got some great news, of the three pieces that you cut, okay, only two pieces need to be cleaned on one side. That is because the other pieces will never see the light of day. One for our front motor mount. These two are going to be welded uh, together briefly, guys. Drilled like we've done to do, a, uh, to do an identical template. And then these are welded on in a way that you'll only see one face. Only one face needs to be painted. And the same with our uni joint. I don't have it here at the moment. So the first measurement you'll do is you'll open your uh, veneers up to 74.60, okay, 74 millimetres, 0.6, all right, and you'll do measurements straight along the middle, okay, like that. Get that scribed in. I've already got my holes drilled because, to be honest, guys, these are pieces of scrap that I'm reusing and they already had holes uh, drilled in them. You can see where I've cut through one of my holes here that was on. This was a long piece with all holes in it. Uh, I'm reusing this, guys, to use this. That's what you do. So that's your first measurement. And what this will enable us to do when these go on together is these will enable us to plug weld onto our threads, onto our trolley rail. So then we can remove our trolley rail and then weld on the underside. Then get your calipers set to 18.3 millimetres. All right. And then you're going to do this one. All right, and that's going to be your location for these holes. Both sides. That'll be your location for these holes. So where those lines intersect, guys, you'll uh, punch and uh, get this ready to be drilled. Set your calipers up at 6.5 millimetres, okay? And then along each edge, a long ways, guys, along our 150 mil stretch here, you're going to do the same uh, thing. Get a scribe mark in along there, right from end to end. Now, at the moment, this is only on one piece, okay? This is on the front motor mount piece. The uh, rear uni joint piece will not be the same measurements as this. So this is only for our front motor mount. So get those scribed in, guys, and then on this side, you're going to do exactly the same. Keep it at 6.5 and then run along the short side. I've got to go around that hole that was pre-drilled. 
Now where those uh, six millimeter holes intersect, six millimeters in from the edge, six millimeters in where they intersect guys, that's where you'll punch and you will drill an eight millimeter drill bit for an M8 bolt. These ones here, these holes here guys, drill those at 10 millimeters. 10 millimeters, eight millimeters. So you will simply punch in each corner, literally where they intersected. Okay, and then you'll punch in those two intersecting lines that we measured first, guys. You'll punch there, 10 mil, 8 mil. Quite a critical measurement, that one, guys, at 6.5 mil each side of these. There's plenty of meat because uh, we're using 5 mil thick material here. But make sure you get that accurate, guys. Don't be too far over or you'll be too thin, all right? It's borderline um, what we're allowing here uh, for our M8 bolts, basically, to uh, connect to our trolley rail, to connect our front. Uh, motor mount onto so make sure you take your time with those measurements now that you've drilled them we can now weld it uh, Clean the bottom off first so then all the rough bits where the drills come through are completely flat and We're going to line it up completely on the second piece of plate that we've cut for the front motor mount I'm going to tack weld this and then we're going to drill through those holes drilling through the other piece of plate Definitely have to clamp this guys into position like I said those measurements are very close to the edge they have to be in that way to clear our rod all right so this most definitely has to be clamped now of course i've got the luxury of my welding table with my hole shots here and i can use my vice clamps here that i built now you are going to use your regular f clamps on the side of your table like these guys get your f clamp on take your time to get this completely lined up with your other piece so then when you drill these they're not outside their tolerances Okay, at the moment, these two holes in the middle that I've got drilled in mine previously are only M8. I have to drill these back out to M10s because that's the size that we want to get our welder in there and plug weld our thread when this goes on, just to assist us to do its uh, finishing weld. So once again, when you've clamped this, guys, you will probably have to um, undoubtedly fine tune this. Now, I don't think this is going to have enough meat for my flat. So what I'm going to need to do, guys, I'm going to need to get another piece of metal in here. So I've got enough clamping force. This may move. And then when you've clamped it, guys, you know how it moves when we clamp it. This one's moved a little bit here, for example. Definitely can't have that because it's moved out the wrong way. So just... Get a hammer, fine tune all of your setup, guys. All right. Normally, what happens with these sorts of clamps when they clamp in, they'll pull the work one way or the other. So this is pulled by top piece on this on the bottom piece this way a little bit, and it's skewed it. So just take your time, get them lined up before we tack these together to do our little template weld, uh, template drill, should I say. And now I can tack these into position so then they're one piece, then I can drill through this piece and have my second piece identical, which is very important. Okay guys, nothing too crazy because we do want to have to grind, we need to grind this off to remove the two pieces, uh, to separate the two pieces once we've drilled this. But you do want to make sure you get a good tack on because you don't want it coming apart. And it will come apart if you haven't done a decent tack. So I can take this over to my drill press now and get that drilled. And guys, hopefully you took my advice and you purchased that little uh, drill clamp, hand drill press and you'll be able to do something very similar. The usual routine where your drill has come through on the back side, just give these a little clean off.
Now you can grab your grinding disc, guys, and you can grind this uh, tack off. So yeah, guys, you will need to give this a little bit of persuasion. Just grab a cold chisel or something like that. I've got a set of these sort of uh, different size chisels. They're quite handy for this sort of thing. It should just fall apart, but of course it, it won't do that. Why would it make it make it, why would it make it easy for the for the dock? And there you have it guys, you'll probably just have to do that. You could use a screwdriver or something, but probably you need to get yourself a little set of cold chisels going forward. Anyway guys, they're very handy for a lot of stuff uh, when you're uh, into metal working doing projects. Next step is to get our bearings off. Okay, we're going to remove our bearings. We're going to be doing some welding on our trolley rail system here now. And again, we're going to use uh, our canola cooking oil. Now, whether you want to use uh, home brand <laughs> or the black and gold brand, if you're here in Australia, that's entirely up to you. If you want to buy really expensive canola oil, knock yourself out. I'll leave that one up to you. But let's get the bearings off both sides. These need to come off now anyway, because these won't go back on until we have painted our... Uh, rig and like I said guys uh, earlier when these go back on we'll be putting these on with some high strength Loctite so you'll need to get yourself a small bottle of high strength Loctite uh, small bottles kind of look like this this one's almost you won't even see the label on this uh, it's just a Loctite guys okay to keep our nuts on without washers get our bearings off and the washers, guys, take the washers as well. I mean, that's fairly obvious, but just in case, to be thorough. Once those bearings have been removed on your long side, guys, so where the bearings are separated by the most distance, this is at the top of our trolley, right? This is where our plate's going to sit for our motor mount bracket that will go on top. So on this top, so on the top of these, we're going to flatten our threads down. Now guys, not too close, all right? I mean, that'll be plenty of adjustment. Our adjustment's here already with our uh, trolley rails as they are anyway, but don't go all the way to your nuts, all right? You never know, you might need to uh, have more adjustment there. We don't want to grind too much out of this, you're just flattening the threads, that's all you're doing. Very good. Well, that is your lot for today. So until I see you in the next tutorial, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.